In this special, we'll be venturing into the world of neuroscience. What is the brain made of? Why do we care? Why do we want to look at it in so much detail? How can we look at it non-invasively? Well, the brain is the most complex known thing in the universe, having evolved over millions of years. It controls us. It defines what we are. So if we can understand what we are, we can learn more about ourselves. We can learn about what makes someone healthy, what happens when something goes wrong. And then, by using all these comparisons, we can try and work out treatments. So, how does MRI work? Well, MRI is based upon water. Why look at water? Because we, and other animals, are made mostly of it. In MRI, we specifically look at the hydrogen proton, for which there are two for every water molecule, H2O. Normally, hydrogen protons spin on their axis in a random direction. That is, some spin up, while others spin down. And some spin in other directions, seemingly random directions. When placed inside a powerful magnet, these protons become parallel and line up with the magnet. Some line up in a north-south direction, where we have a north and a south. Other ones line up in a south-north direction. That's because the protons act like little magnets that have both positive and negative poles. So when in a powerful magnet, some align this way and some align this way. That is, in a north-north and a south-south. This one's called parallel to the magnet. This one we call anti-parallel. It's been calculated that for every 10,000 protons, there are six more that line, align in a parallel direction than in an anti-parallel direction. That's not a lot, but it's enough to collect their overall signal. After entering the big magnet, a series of loud noises are emitted, which represent different manipulations of these spinning protons. In its most basic form, the first noise represents an electromagnetic coil, which is essentially a piece of circular copper with electricity flowing through it. And it's being turned on for a very brief period of time, usually in the order of milliseconds or even less. This pushes or flips the rotating proton off its axis. We usually flip it 90 degrees. It's the frequency of this electromagnetic coil, the radio frequency coil, that has to exactly match the frequency at which the protons are spinning, or what we call precessing. This is known as the resonant or Lamour frequency. The R in resonance is where we get the R in MRI. As the proton returns to its original resting position, we listen with the antenna to the proton as it returns. That is, shortly after we've flipped the proton, usually a few hundreds or thousandths of a second later, we're essentially measuring the time it takes for the proton to return to its resting state. Put another way, we are measuring where the protons are in their relaxations. We do this with an antenna in the scanner, which is placed near the object being scanned. As different parts of anatomy, for example, grey matter, white matter, and cerebrospinal fluid have different amounts and densities of water, and therefore hydrogen, they take different lengths of time to return to their original resting position. It's these relaxation time differences that provide the information that will eventually form our images and produce the degree of contrast between tissues. By using the word contrast, I mean the ability to distinguish one object from another. Different types of tumours, for example, also have different and specific amounts and densities of water, and therefore, the hydrogen protons will take different times to return to their original resting position, and therefore provide a different contrast that can differentiate it from other surrounding anatomy. The construction of an MRI scanner is quite ingenious. There are copper coils very cleverly arranged all around the scanner and lining its walls. This enables us to capture images from any direction, 
and also constrain the focus of the magnetic field so that we can acquire slices in particular spatial locations. So here, or here, or here, or here, for example. The loud noises you hear when near a working MRI scanner represent the coils slightly expanding and contracting as the electricity flows through them up to hundreds of times per second. While some types of MRI scanners can be up to around 110 decibels, which is similar to a plane taking off, recent advancements have reduced that noise to around 20 decibels above ambient or background noise level. A key feature of NMR is that the resonant frequency of a particular substance is directly proportional to the strength of the applied magnetic field. So therefore, the stronger the magnet, the faster the protons will spin and the clearer the image will eventually be. The first MRI scanners used magnets that were in the order of around 0.2 Tesla, which is around 4,000 times the north to south pole magnetic field strength of the Earth, called the Terra Nova. But currently, the standard strength of an MRI magnet is 3 Tesla. That is, around 60,000 times the magnetic field strength of the Earth. Some human MRI scanners use magnets as powerful as 9.4 Tesla, but such strong magnetic fields present issues related to vertigo and, well, let's just say challenges to engineers and physicists who develop these amazing devices.